Yacht Club Games are the best developers of all time. Thanks for watching everybody, make sure to like this video and subscribe, I'll see you next time, bye! Okay, no, but seriously, wow, you need to play the latest DLC of Shovel Knight, Spectre of Torment. For the uninitiated, this is the second of three expansions coming for the hit indie sensation which debuted in 2014. I made a video last year looking at the differences of the first new campaign, Plague of Shadows, and praised it for its ingenuity in switching up the Shovel Knight formula to create a completely new experience with the same main assets. But now, Spectre of Torment, where you play as the cursed Spectre Knight, basically says take everything you thought you knew about Shovel Knight and throw it out the window. This is an atom bomb of reinvention. Let's start with the mechanics. While Plague Knight had you launching yourself high into the air with potions you've concocted, Spectre Knight has the ability to cling to walls and climb them Ninja Gaiden style, as well as slash through enemies and objects either at an upward or downward angle depending on your position. Combining these two elements leads to some really unique level design. Possibilities are widened because of their quick and infinite usability, and once again this transforms the original stages of Shovel Knight into barely recognizable locations. With more of a focus on movement rather than combat, some of these levels have now become brutal platforming gauntlets, but the boss fights on the other hand appear to be easier than before. Spectre Knight can pulverize bosses with ease, because of his slash ability having a little bit of recoil which can lead to some sick aerial combos, and maybe these battles were supposed to feel like a piece of cake on purpose. He is a dark lord with a giant scythe after all, but Spectre of Torment takes things even further and adds new content that you've never seen before into every stage, like a giant rainbow pukey bird turned into a mini boss fight, giving Black Knight a freaking cool rhino companion, or the best part by far, and seriously take a deep breath because it's incredible, riding your scythe like a skateboard! This is when I was absolutely sold on this game, by far the coolest thing you can do. And it's not just on these rails, you can even buy an upgraded suit that lets you do it at any time. Stuff like this makes movement super fluid and fast, so it's really fun to try out new techniques. It feels extremely satisfying when you pull off a hard section flawlessly. But the changes aren't just in the levels, the hub is a sort of combination between Plague and Shovel Knight. There's no more overworld, you just select the next stage from the castle. But you can also buy all sorts of upgrades here, like health or magic buffs, special armor, or even secondary abilities, sort of like the trinkets from the original game. To unlock these, you have to collect red skulls throughout the various stages. And I like that you don't just receive them outright, you have to complete a little mini challenge to see how the abilities work. That's a neat touch. Some of these are pretty unique, like a skeleton sentry turret that shoots ahead of you, or a teleport ability that automatically kills the enemy closest to you. You. But overall, I didn't use them very often. Other than a healing orb or the occasional giant claw attack to kill durable enemies, the normal slash ability was more than enough to get the job done. Spectre of Torment is a prequel to the events of Shovel Knight as the Enchantress is building her Order of No Quarter, so your job is to travel to the different regions and recruit the other leaders of her army. It's fun to see what the bosses were doing before they became enlisted, as well as encountering some surprise guests along the way. But the best part of the story was discovering Spectre Knight's origins. Occasionally, you'll go through these flashback sequences, playing as Donovan, our main character when he was still a human. You get to see his tragic tale unfold and learn more about his motivation as a henchman to the Enchantress. But I love how these sections are in like an old Game Boy style color palette, it's just ugh! This is the kind of stuff that Yacht Club does best, the polish. All the little details are what ties the whole experience together, and it's what has made this my favorite incarnation of Shovel Knight so far. The fact that every stage has some new mechanic to switch up the gameplay, the way they make Spectre Knight endearing, much like they did with Plague Knight's campaign. How the background changes as you convert more bosses to the Order of No Quarter and the world plunges into deeper chaos. Heck, possibly my favorite part is that King Knight's song was changed from a minor key into a major key which makes it sound much happier and more regal, which totally makes sense, right? Because it's like before he was a bad guy? All of these remixes are top notch, by the way. Vert did it again, y'all! Even though it's possibly the darkest story from the Shovel Knight series, somehow they still manage to make everything have such an upbeat atmosphere. It's like even though these guys are spooky, they're also goofy. Spectre Knight is somber and edgy, but he's also like totally radical, dude! While Plague Knight's mechanics took some time to get used to, Spectre Knight's felt perfectly natural for 
from the get-go. Now, one tiny gripe is that sometimes you'll accidentally slash yourself into a pit or not go in the direction you want because of the angle changing at just the wrong time, but these moments were very few and far between. Besides, this happened less and less as I got used to how Spectre Knight controlled, and it never detracted from how fun it is to glide around stages. If you can make movement enjoyable, you have a pretty solid game, but when you complete the whole package with charm and unique elements that expand your game's lore and gameplay, that's when you have a downright classic on your hands. It's a pretty short campaign, but they've added some challenges to fully show off Spectre Knight's abilities and it's just mwah. Supposedly we're getting King Knight's chapter later this year, which is the last of the DLC packs for Shovel Knight, and then Yacht Club Games is working on an all new project. And if their future works look anything like their current repertoire, I'll be all in from day one. Now go enjoy being a grim reaper with attitude, and scare your way to victory. I'll see you guys next time, stay frosty my friends. Hey guys, today's episode was sponsored by Dollar Shave Club, and they have a very special offer I'm excited to share with you. Shaving can be a hassle sometimes, but having a good blade makes all the difference, so right now you can go to dollarshaveclub.com slash snowmangaming and get a one month membership of any razor for just one dollar. They sent me some razors to try out, and I was really impressed with how good they are for the price. There's a wide selection to choose from on their website, and they deliver them right to your doorstep. No more going to the store to stock up on cheapo razors. So once again, go to dollarshaveclub.com slash snowmangaming to try any razor for one dollar. No catch, no hidden fees, you can cancel any time. If you enjoy my content, this is a great way to support the channel, and you get something out of it too. So thanks for your support, and I'll see you guys next time.